Well, well, it's another Halloween and another Halloween season is upon us. This time I figured I'd bring you a Halloween special covering Resident Evil 7. It's been a big year for Resident Evil, 20 years. So they're celebrating with releasing a new game as well as remasters and all that good stuff. So I figured I'd talk about a lot of stuff in this video, make it more constructed talk about some stuff I didn't cover in previous podcasts and videos, just make a nice little bundle of uh, Halloween spirit for you guys. I'm missing something though. Something's not right. Yeah. Oh, well that's right. I'm Michael Myers. Well, that's who I am this year. It was hard enough to find a good fucking mask. But anyway, let's begin. Resident Evil 7 Biohazard has been a big discussion in the community. I have covered it a lot over the several months of constant updates, demo releases, and news related posts. Some more things have come up and we will get to them shortly. With the first introduction with the demo, people were able to experience a brand new game from the ground up, with first person, finding items again, figuring out what items go where, also doing things in a different order to see what the outcome will entail. I also like the idea of the tape and going back to it to only discover new things in the current timeline. I like that a lot, and it gets people thinking, and constantly going back to check for changes. There is also the infamous finger, that did nothing and drove all of us fucking crazy. Capcom, I swear to god with your fucking finger, Jesus Christ. See, I got the new update and shit, and I'm trying to fucking do the finger, and put it on the hand, and it still doesn't unlock anything, Jesus Christ! Well, you know, I mean it is for fun, it keeps people involved, it gets people talking. So, with Capcom's recently released update, which was the latest update of the demo, you are able to finally find out what the finger was used for. Uh, the infamous finger that would point different ways possibly, or maybe all the items that you examine move anyway? Well, it caused a uproar online as time went on, and people decided that, you know, we want to find out what the hell this is for. So, it fits into a hand, but we can't do anything with the hand. The update just kind of gave us that and uh, some keys. It doesn't look like it gave us so much, but it does keep people on edge and it keeps people talking. And I like Capcom for that. I appreciate that. But, God damn it, stop fucking with our feelings. I don't like the fact that you're giving us the finger. I don't like that, Capcom. I don't like that at all. But honestly, it is pretty fucking cool. I like when companies are able to get people talking and kind of have, you know, a community. It's really nice. With the update, we were able to use the finger for a fake hand, and we still couldn't do much with it, no matter where we put it in the house. With keys that didn't unlock anything, keeping us on edge for what's to come. Now, the overall story follows this weird cannibalistic family. It takes place four years after Resident Evil 6, and we control the main character of Ethan. With him searching for his missing wife, he stumbles upon the Baker family. The plot is set up within the demos and the trailers, and I'm very intrigued and can't wait to see what the new characters and enemies have to offer. Hopefully we can get some good appearances by characters we know and love, but at this point that may be wishful thinking, but I guess we will see. People do not like change, and that's a fact. So when the Resident Evil 7 trailer was released, everybody was just like, what the hell is this? First person? And then it divided a bunch of people that really liked it or really hated it, thought it was a PT ripoff after the demo came out. but. As I kept playing it, and I kept dealing with the community, and talking to everybody, and just uh, having so much fun with the actual demo, um, it opened my mind up to so many possibilities on what the game could be like. And I think that's where I still stand. I think at the end of the day, I'm going to buy the game and play it and see how I like it. I'm not going to go in uh, already deciding on what I like, or playing Capcom's favor, as it's been said in the past. I just give my honest opinions. It's not like I like everything, it's not like I hate everything. And it's not like I'm gonna go with trends or stuff that's cool to hate. I don't really care. I just play stuff because I think it's fun, you know? And Resident Evil is something that I've been a part of for a while. It's something that's been involved in my life, all my life. So it's something that I take a lot of pride in and, and being a part of you know, um, this community, being able to, to share with you guys, uh, being able to communicate and get opinions. But that's what it's about, open opinions. If somebody watches this and simply says, hey, 
I fucking just don't like RE7, that's perfectly fine. To each his own. If you don't like it, you don't like it. If you want to make up the decision before the game comes out, that's fine. Some people won't buy this game because of that. But I think at the end of the day, you have to eventually end up trying to at least see what this game has to offer before just jumping to conclusions off of a few demos. But that's just my take on it. I feel like once it's released in January, we are going to have a better perspective as to what this game is trying to achieve as far as a Resident Evil title. Because it is a Resident Evil title. They might be able to try to hide that 7 on the front with, by slightly altering the color, and I know it's the 7 is still on the front, but it's still trying to stand out on its own. And it's very interesting to, to wonder if this would just be its own thing, and maybe the other Resident Evil after this might not even be like this. Who knows? I don't even know what the hell they're doing. And let's not even get started with Resident Evil Vendetta because that's something that's also coming out in addition to this. This is a crazy year for Resident Evil, but it's also a good year to be a Resident Evil fan. I think that people that played the two demos, a lot of them are very excited for the game, and I know I am. I can't wait to experience a new Resident Evil like it's the first time. And that's the point. The first time. You're going to be playing this game and you're going to feel defenseless. You're not going to know what's going on. You're not going to know all these new characters. Not everything's going to be explained. And I think that's a very cool experience because it's something different for a Resident Evil game, especially when we had titles where we keep seeing the same recurrent characters over and over again. But I still want to see other characters because, let's face it, this is still a Resident Evil universe and we have to at least see something that resembles something that we've seen. I think it would be, they would have some fucking balls if they just did a game that had nothing to do with fucking nothing. But we have seen Umbrella, we've heard Ada's voice, somebody's voice, it's not, it doesn't sound like Ada, but it's somebody's voice on that fucking phone, so who knows what's going on. Some things that people forget is the opportunities that this game will have. You're going to have a lot more chances to solve puzzles. You're even going to have the chance to even be scared. I mean, I'm not saying it's going to scare everybody, but at the same time, I think there's a reason why some things need to be altered and changed sometimes. If the formula is done right, everything will hit perfect. Some of the new mini teasers released show us sellers, recorders, the fact that we can use a shotgun, which is awesome. It also shows solid combat is in the game. There's also somewhat of an item box again, which looks fucking awesome, even if it's not the traditional item box. And let's not forget the healing system they show off, which looks a lot better than RE6 by a fucking long shot. I understand that people want to have the same, same opinion. I mean, at the end of the day, it's always going to be a two-way street, the people that are for it and the people that are against it. And, you know, I say, have an open mind. That's what it's about. Have an open mind. We have two demos to go off of, a bunch of trailers with a bunch of information about the family, but I like the fact that Capcom is taking the back road with this one. They're not explaining everything, nor should they have to. This is something that they want you to play. They want to keep you interested, invested. They want you to figure out what the finger's for. They want you to... If this is something different for them. I like the fact that they're not telling you everything, and I like the fact that the trailers kind of give you bits here and there and make you kind of put together the puzzles. There's several fans online that are figuring stuff out, several people that have different theories as to what may happen in this game. I know there's a lot of spoilers, but I'm doing my best to avoid them. I want to play the game for myself and see how I like it when it comes out. I'll even stream it if I have to, just to get a nice fucking reaction from everyone and experience this game with everyone and the masses, because it's going to be great when it comes out, especially being able to talk about it in podcasts or discussions with you guys. Um, it's always great seeing the community come together and figure out what the hell is going on in this game. But I like that though. It seems like they're taking a step back, they're stripping it down. You don't have the issues that Six had, which had a bunch of bloated stories trying to intertwine within one. Now granted, I did do my Resident Evil 6 review, but at the end of the day, I still think that there should have been a lot more done to that story. I think taking it a step back, making it a little bit more of a simple plot, whether it might not seem simple, but I think that that's the direction they should be going in. Um, I have high hopes for returning characters, and I also have high hopes for new characters as well. The door is definitely open, and I feel like Capcom is definitely making the right moves with this one. But, we're gonna have to wait and see. Just from what I'm seeing, it looks like with the combat being confirmed, and the item boxes, and everything else, 
I think this is something that we could definitely look forward to as a Resident Evil title. I definitely will be picking this up and we'll be doing a review on it. And what do you guys think? What do you guys think of the Resident Evil 7 stuff that's been going on? So what is your favorite Resident Evil game to play around the Halloween season? Uh, mine is definitely Remake. I feel like that's the one that's probably still still scary on some kind of level. I mean, it's not like all the Resident Evil aren't scary whatsoever, but at the end of the day, you know, Remake has that vibe to it. That, to me, that's like a Halloween game. And the fact that it was free on PlayStation Plus, today would be the last day to get it since it's Halloween, but play that fucking game if you haven't, please. So, what do you play? Let me know down in the comments. It doesn't even have to be Resident Evil. What horror game do you play? What horror movies do you watch? Uh, I hope you guys have a great Halloween. Be safe. Don't party too hard. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.